Hello gents, uh, this is Hassan, you can call me Cortex. Uh, I would like to show you a project I'm working on and uh, today it's, uh, it's an interior animation project and uh, I got to animate uh, fishes in an aquarium and I would like to show you how I did it. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce you to uh, the hand results. Uh, probably I should um, take you through this scene a bit. Uh, that's the aquarium, it's in a living room setting uh, and here is the camera uh, that I animated to get uh, the result. You can see uh, the bits and pieces of the aquarium and uh, here is a quick play. Here is a quick play of uh, what the video looks like. Uh, you can see the fish is moving and the water bubbles and uh, everything in the aquarium. So, uh, to have a quick one, uh, here is uh, our aquarium model isolated in a scene. Uh, that's the entire thing. Uh, it's uh, made up of uh, different components. We have a glass. Uh, okay, here's the glass and uh, here is the water. Now we're, now we're left with the foliage and the rock bed which we can also freeze so that uh, we don't have uh, interference in our scenes. We have the foliage which uh, I'm not sure we're going to touch. So uh, basically I expect you to uh, be able to populate an, uh, an aquarium scene like this with fishes and uh, I'll quickly show you how, uh, how I made the bubbles. Okay, uh, this is a quick look, a quick look at the bubbles. Uh, basically I made a I made a sphere basically I just made a sphere and I converted it to an editable poly so that I can uh, I can access the subobject menu and then uh, okay sorry uh, hold on Oh, okay. I made a mistake there. Uh, convert to editable. I needed to convert it to editable poly. Okay, so I have my sub object menu now, and I can make an instance where I can scale, scale it down, and move it uh, in a different direction, so that we have our bubble. You know all not uh, looking very similar so that we have them in the similar planes and we can scale them up just like that so uh, basically that was uh, the trick behind uh, having these bubbles and I created similar ones you can see them yeah you can see them here okay so uh, and our bedrock is just a simple rectangle and the bottom the aquarium base too is a simple rectangle so uh, let's quickly have a look at uh, how we're gonna animate the fishes in the aquarium uh, for for the for the rotor it's it's a very simple one all we have to do is uh, make sure that uh, we have the walking pivot in the center so that when we rotate it it rotates from the center so uh, that's a very basic one for animation you can use your set key and uh, give it a keyframe at this point and move your time slider a little bit and uh, rotate it and set your key so that you have it uh, rotate when you scrub through your time slider and uh, at this point you can have it rotate it this way too yeah and then uncheck your set key and that's your wheel that's your wheel rotating so because you have to rotate in the direction where the bubbles are moving you have to make sure that you're making it you know clockwise direction so that these bubbles can move up in the direction that's uh, that's how an aquarium works really and uh, we're inspired by one here in the office okay so uh now looking at these fishes uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, to create, you know, the way fishes move, they move in random motions, even though uh, in this kind of environment, they're a bit slow. So we're going to be gentle with uh, the animation. Uh, the first thing we have to create is a line 
on which uh, will animate the fishes so here is a quick one uh, this uh, right view of the aquarium the first thing we can do is uh, create a path create a path for the fishes to move okay so now having our path uh, we may have to okay uh, on hide all uh, let me uh, let me move this to zero okay okay let's just move our path here so uh, we can hide the glass uh, hide the water and uh, okay this is what we got so having our path here uh, but we have this right now on a single plane so what we want to do is we want to make a, a fish move in different directions um, so the first thing we have to do is modify the parts to have this kind of sinusoidal movement of fishes because uh, usually they don't move in straight lines so uh, we have our parts edited we have a fish making a turn at this end of the aquarium okay so here we go yeah uh, okay so we have a little bit of dynamic path right there and uh, we can actually animate any of these fishes uh, we can assign them to these parts so uh, we can start with this guy here make sure you have your uh, time slider back at the inception of your animation and then while selecting the fish you can go to animation constraints and uh, click a path constraints uh, now what you have to select is the line that you just created so uh, automatically it puts the fish at the beginning of the path and then as assigns it all through the path and to the end of the path uh, now you can notice something weird about our fish's movement it seems to simply glide along the path right so okay in order to correct this what we just have to do is very simple uh, if you go to your uh, motion tab and you scroll down a bit you see some of these parameters which you can modify and uh, tell uh, Studio Max to uh, align the fish to the path so uh, if you simply click follow you can see that the, the fish the fish's orientation has changed a bit uh, it's simply following the path but now on its side so we need to ensure that it's uh, moving in the right direction by clicking the axis why now this axis is dependent on the object axis itself so it's uh, very important that you take note of this so now simple we have a fish moving right along the path where we want it to move so uh, another thing you have to be sure of is uh, you don't want your fish to be colliding with uh, any element in the scene so you can still adjust you can still adjust your part if you find out that uh, the fish is going to collide with something so you can still adjust your path and that makes it very easy it's uh, it's very flexible and you can have uh, your animation you know okay and uh, it's not broken at all you can do the same for these other fishes uh, if you're going to create a new line uh, like a new path uh, take your time slider back to zero uh, and then be sure that uh, you're in a kind of view like this so you can start your path from here and bring your fish down and uh, down this way 
uh, you can adjust your path uh, be sure that it's something you really want to handle simple a simple path is good and uh, it just makes your work easier so okay here we go yeah so now we need to move our path back to where our aquarium is which is somewhere very far away from the center point of the scene uh, that easy uh, we can still modify the parts to have a, a sort of three-dimensional movement in the scene uh, okay so we don't have your 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 a fish moving in just one direction uh, it has to be a little bit more dynamic yeah something like that okay so that does it uh, let's find one of these fishes so that we can uh, assign it to the path uh, okay you may want to rotate your fish to something like this so that we have it to uh, move along this part of the aquarium now there's uh, one thing you don't have to miss out you have to make sure that you walk in pivot on the fish is centralized on the fish if not you're going to have um, very terrible results so uh let's let's edit the working pivot uh affect object only Effect pivot only, and then the center to the object which uh, you have it there. So your working pivot is good now. You can put your fish back somewhere in the aquarium. Okay, okay. So uh, there goes a little fish. Uh, I'm still not a bit comfortable with this line. I might have to move this down a bit yeah something uh, this gentle okay so here goes a little fishy uh, okay then we go to animation uh, constraints and uh, click a path constraint and push it on your path so right now our dear little fish is on our path Okay, now just uh, like we did for the other fish, we need to check under your motion tab. You need to check if uh, your fish is following the path. And now you see it's on its side, so we just do the same thing for it. But unfortunately, our fish is uh, <laughs> it's our fish is in reverse. And one other thing, it's uh, colliding with with this because uh, our path actually runs through there so what you're going to do is uh, just click flip and then a fish is uh, flipping on the other side and uh, there it goes and there it goes and there it goes through goes through the spinner so what we're just going to do is uh, select the path where we have the fish on and uh, you know modify the vertices such that we have it bypassing that and not too much that it doesn't come out of the aquarium okay and we can modify the end part of our, our line to go that way so you ensure that uh, there are no collisions anywhere in the scene and make sure they're going gentle gentle enough so if you play uh, okay you may have to adjust this a bit uh, to slow down the speed 500 um, uh, you slow down the speed here it's 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 either of the two so let's see what this gives us uh, okay now this is more gentle this is more gentle and uh, this is more like it now you may want to add some detail to your fishes uh, as we have here this fish you might want it to wriggle a little bit as as it moves along the path so what you have to do is um, add a noise modifier uh, we have noise somewhere 
somewhere around here and uh, you can uh, shake it up a little bit okay uh, still not much fractal uh, let's see this and then animate noise 12 2 okay you can see you can see that uh, your fish okay uh, probably we would notice it somewhere on one of these fishes you know to have this wriggling effect while the fish goes through the water yeah you might want to have something like that so that it's not all all smooth so okay basically that's it and then the same thing goes for the bubble if you're going to animate the bubbles all you have to do is uh, mark them up uh, you could uh, sing this a bit and uh, be sure that you have your set key on then you set the primary key at uh, zero and you move your time slider forward a bit and relative to the speed of this spinner you move it up a bit so that you have your bubbles rising and then that's it it's that simple uh, two positions and bubbles always rise up in many cases <laughs> okay so that's about a bubble and then you do the same for the other bubbles uh, is there anything I skipped I'm pretty not sure so uh, let me take you through the completed scene again uh, okay this is what we have you can see you can see all the fishes are animated now and uh, they're moving gently through through that scene okay now there is um something I didn't tell you and uh, that's about rendering rendering the bubbles you know because you're likely going to be applying the same material to the bubble and the water you may want to make uh, and because you there's a lot of uh, refraction on the water uh, this is likely going to be your level of refraction of the water so uh, there was a trick <clears throat> there was a trick I used so what I simply did was uh, just uh, make sure that uh, your object is uh, a little bit uh, translucent so you have uh, maybe 0.5 visibility in your render and then uh, you create a material such that it is uh, not so refractive at the same time it's not so refractive uh, had some little bit of reflect and uh, be sure that your object is about 0 0.5 visible so that it it gives it that translucent translucent feeling so if you scroll through your time slider now this is what you're going to get something like that and that's the camera animated and uh, that's the fishes and you can see the parts that they're moving along and uh, in your rendering it's just plain and easy and simple play for fishes so uh, thank you very much for watching this tutorial i hope to make uh, many more of these tutorials uh, sometime soon okay thank you very much thank you